Good morning to all. Today I am going to discuss about settlement of stray soil, that is settlement of foundation soil, rest in the foundation on various rooting conditions. Few my beloved friends suggested to me on my one earlier video where I have given some simple method of explanation of foundation settlement using IS code of practice on the basis of that my friends suggested to me Settlement for different loading conditions what shall be the approximate pattern. Perhaps either after seeing my video at my YouTube channel, they perhaps do not further study the relevant codes and lot of other textbooks are available. They are either they overlook this codal provision or textbooks information. Whatever it may be, I personally I have personally discussed with my few beloved friends. And for me, it is not at all possible to contact all my friends together at a time. There are some technical problems also there because of time schedule. New friends, there they have. 24 hours difference of time. When my working period, that is normally daytime, we are in midnight. So this type of problems also there. And under these circumstances, my two, my friends give me one solution to address all of my beloved friends at a time through making and making a YouTube video so that they can agree one, they can read, they can view, they can get at a time from me. Before going to discuss about this settlement. For me, it is better to know something about soil. Soil mechanics and foundation engineering or geotechnical engineering basically have a big gap between textbooks and is practical application in field. Other problem is whatever it may be, we should also directed by standard code of practice of the country, our country in our India. There are IS codes, IRC codes, railway board guidelines, and national buildings guidelines, that is which is normally followed by CW Center, the Public Works Department. Everywhere these codes 
are also different, many different opinions of their own. For example, in pile loaf test in granular soil, cab value in IRC 2911, which is restricted to 1.5, which was earlier restricted to 2. And IRC 78, their coefficient of art pressure, that is K value, they are restricted up to 1.8. This is a this is a big difference in safety factor also. In some codes, it is say it is 2.5, and some codes it is say 2.57, not 2.57, 3.57. In some codes, it is 3. So much of difference. In some cases, some food specified the self weight of this also considered. In some cases, in other food, it's completely silent. There are a lot of difference between the food itself and we are bound to accept the codal provision only. Before discussing about the settlement of the foundation settlement, for me it will be better to look about the failure of road bearing soil formation. There are basically two types of soil. One is cohesive soil, another is non-cohesive soil. That is C5 soil or C soil, that is cohesive soil, non-cohesive soil, that is granular soil, C0 soil. Accordingly, the permissible limit of C, C5 soil and C0 soil is different. And there are two types of failure, foundation failure. We are considering always two types of foundation failure. One is shell failure against which adequate safety factor is necessary. Another is settlement failure. Settlement failure means when it, the settlement is beyond the permissible limit, there is specific amount of permissible limit is there. Some, something are 50 mm, somewhere it is 60 mm, somewhere it is 75 mm, somewhere it is 125 mm, anything. Earlier, before introduce of all the codes, there is such settlement is considered only one inch, that is 25 mm. Even earlier ASTM codes also, it was introduced first by American American standard testing materials that ASTM second code was British standard that is BS code and later portion that is our Indian that is IS All this failures, shear failures or settlement failure, shear, again shear failure, educate safety factor is necessary 
since sheer is all of a sudden, it will not give any information before failure. A column is failed, it will not give any signal to you before total failure, total vanish. But in case of settlement failure, it is very gradual. It will give sufficient time. Even in early starting of settlement failure, in initial stage, no one can notice it. And no, it is not possible to measure it unless and until there is some scientific device attached to the structure, no one can notice and no one can measure. When the settlement lead to some amount of tilt, settlement, there is a misunderstanding between ourselves. Tilt is only for when differential loadings is there. No. In case of uniform loading also, there are a lot of other factors which is spacing of the loaded areas and sizes of loaded areas, one lightly loaded, say one lightly loaded column, the base area will be smaller, then the highly loaded one column of a building, the area will be more. Accordingly, settlement will be different. And it is very difficult to maintain the central line of the structure and central line of the loading and CG of loaded area in case of raft foundation even. There are two lines, central line of the structure and central line of the loading or with other one is CG of loaded area. Out of three, only two can be placed in one axis. All three neighbor automatically. In left also, uniform loading is not at all possible. We just assume the building will be when raft is provided that a new farm settlement will be there. In many cases, soil formation will be different. Difference with soil type, megascopical classification may be same, but some some corner there may be some of a saturated soil, soil moisture may be very, at the time of construction may not be very, but after construction soil may, moisture may vary inside the raft or inside the building and outside the corner of the building soil moisture may vary because that is exposed to the weather condition partly or fully exposed to the weather condition, whereas inside the building it is not affected by the weather condition. So soil moisture may also vary. In case of variation of soil moisture, settlement may also vary. That is, some white shall be soft white, or when soil moisture will be there, if it is not pervious soil formation, then that moisture behaves like a incompressible material. Whereas less moisture means 
it will more supplement will be there. However, the supplement failure is recordable when noticeable tilts are there. Of course, it will give sufficient time for taking care of. Although initial stage of settlement starting point no one can notice yet, after noticing the settlement that can be that can be managed to tackle to so that further settlement is not there. Even after tilting also rehabilitation works to resist the resist further till settlement can be taken down. In my life, in one video I show there are a lot of lot of tilt in such case cases also the building is now restored and settlement is controlled by her. and load was also reduced sufficiently, there will be no further settlement. So we must be very careful about shear failure, not for settlement failure. Settlement failure, it, it can be taken, it can be handled. But shear failure does not give you anything, any sense to prevent it. After complete collapse of the structure due to, face, due to shear failure of the columns or foundation or whatever it may be, shear failure means whole structure is damaged. So, adequate safety factor against shear failure is necessary. Under these circumstances, during SBC analysis, the SBC with a adequate safety factor and that SBC settlement shall be within the permissible limit as per IS 1904. That should be the criteria. <coughs> In case of settlement also, we have to classify the soil in two types. One is consolidated soil, which we normally term pre-consolidated, over-consolidated, hard, very dense, compact. With this adjective, we are explain the consolidated soil formation. And normally consolidated, we use time as soft, plastic clay, loose, quick, poor, this type of adjective we use. In accordingly, our esteemed scientist and expert had also selected two different methods of settlement analysis. One is for normally consolidated soil. As I, as I said earlier, in such cases, this based on compression index, compression index, CC value, for normally consolidated soil, assuming probably, probability of consolidation in long time duration, CC because it will be gradually soil will be under some loading 
and we go for consolidation test in laboratory when we apply load the volume of soil is decreasing volume means the height of the test specimen is gradually decreasing like that when we loaded the soil mass below the foundation during that loading period pore quarter will be draining out gradually if it is fibrous soil granular soil it will go out immediately or if it is impervious soil it will require several years even we can calculate up to 95% up to 95% or 90% in comp- laboratory test results which is conducted on confined condition in actual field it is unconfined how much water is going out oozing out is not known so so it will be time process time is a major factor to drain out the pore water pore water release means pore pressure pore pressure is released because soil produces strength based on shear strength plus pore pressure so pore pressure produced by pore water water is incompressible so when we press it that water is give some opposite reaction so when drain out there will be no pore water and there will be pore pressure will be 95% approximately 95% pore water drain out another is it is for normally consolidated another is mv volume compressibility for pre consolidated soil the there are two different equation also for normally consolidated you see cc h0 divided by 1 plus e0 and stress component is log overburden pressure effective overburden pressure plus effective pressure divided by effective overburden pressure this equation for normally consolidated clay for consolidated clay effective pressure volume compressibility h0 h0 is significant depth significant height of thickness of compressible stratum normally we call clay is a compressible stratum sand is not compressible stratum however on the other hand we have to calculate settlement for sandy soil also because in total provision there are sandy soil also there that is that more or less for pre consolidated soil that is hard clay or sand permissible limit of settlement as given in IS 1904 are same and general clay it is it is termed as plastic clay this is this equation is applicable for sandy soil this equation is applicable 
But people say it. Most of the people prefer to say that the sand the consolidation is not required. But con- which consolidation is not being conducted? How one can go for go for settlement analysis for sand deformation? Either they have to go for directly with this equation because. volume compressibility value is not readily available however uh, compression index value can be determined with some other empirical equation also from much other also one can calculate the compression compression index or from what is the x also one can go for cc value but please do not adopt limit value although it is recommended in is 8009 part 1 cc equal to uh, wl minus something into 0.008.007.009 like that with that value one should not calculate on basis of liquid limit one should not estimate the compression index value since the height the compression index is directly related to void that is maximum void and minimum void based on maximum void and minimum void this compression index is related it is if it is very very soft soil very soft soil practically uh, core is not available there then one can one may go for cc value on the strength of liquid limit only also but that is not reliable which is since it is entirely related to void pressure h0 is significant depth that is let us consider the homogeneous soil same layer same soil is extended up to a reasonable depth tajagi and vasana they have they have adjusted H zero as twice B or actual thickness of compressible stratum, which ever is less. On the other hand, Westergaard theory suggests one point five B or actual thickness of compressible stratum, which ever is less. it is most people most people prefer westergaard theory because because this is the this is the diagram stress distribution diagram this this is the z say if z is say 2 meter the 2 meter means Since it is 30 degree, the angle is there. 30 degree angle is equal to uh, 0.5. Both side 0.5. So it will be B plus B plus this thickness. If it is calculate here. This is B B plus this depth. That will be pressure intensity. During calculation of the settlement of foundation, we require the effective pressure. That is actually mid height of the loaded area. 
actually loaded area shall be this way this way the loaded area it will be not like a straight line it will be a bulb shape bulb shape and that bulb is just touching the line so at 1.5 b this will the applied load, say we are applying a load of 2 MPa, then here it will be 0.2 MPa, it will be 10% loading. Then 10% loading, it will, be, it will be more or less, it will be balanced by the overburden, effective overburden pressure of shuttle. Because here it is some effective of a button pressure and it will be which is which will be E0 that is which will be P0 P0 is not here P0 is not here P0 will somewhere at the middle mid height of the stress area stress side, half of the center of the stress side, that is P0. So, more than 10%, it shall be balanced by, it is not, not more than when it will get 10% line, it shall be balanced, rest, less than 10% amount of space shall be balanced by our burden. It is not necessary to consider more than 10%. So, now you see, in this equation, in this equation, the, it is directly proportional to pressure intensity and thickness for pre-consolidated soil or consolidated soil or over consolidated soil this in this equation this pressure intensity pressure intensity this is pressure intensity pressure intensity or this thickness settlement is directly proportional with if Thickness is increasing, settlement will be increasing. If pressure intensity will be increasing, then settlement will be increasing. However, we should consider A0, if we consider A0 as 1.5, then P0, this P, when P is increasing, automatically increasing settlement. But in this equation, P is, is not alone responsible or A0 is not alone responsible since this is based on love. This section is based on love. So we must analyze for this type of soil. You see, there, are, there is another more settlement, which is immediate settlement or elastic settlement. Immediate settlement, which may be completed during the construction period itself. Normally, the granular soil, which are highly pervious, it is this settlement immediate completed. But however, nowhere any major problem for this immediate settlement or elastic settlement has been reported so far during my 52 years in my professional life, 
I never heard anything about the immediate, any the structural problem for immediate settlement. And the elastic settlement is by and large rebound tendency of soil since soil is elastic. Soil is, has elastic property. If we press some soil, not powder or lump, anything, if we are pressing one, if we place some heavy ball over a ground, then some the heavy steel ball, if you are putting over the ground, for some moment it will little settle, little in micromillimeter, little settle, but when released, it will take again original shape. During plate load test, I hope you have all known about plate load test and most of you have closely associated with uh, plate load test. Some of you surely conducted some plate load test. In plate load test, when applied pressure is released, there will be some rebound settlement and one is residual settlement, another is rebound settlement. That rebound settlement is elastic settlement and residual settlement is consolidation settlement. From that plate load test itself, one can calculate the elastic settlement and consolidation settlement, which is residual settlement, that is consolidation settlement, which will take sufficient time, and rebound settlement is elastic settlement. If, if we draw the load versus settlement curve in log log scale, there are three different straight lines. The first straight line, straight line is elastic settlement, which is equal to rebound value, rebound settlement. If you are not shaking it, you can shake it. Very interesting. Normally, what normal we are uh, drawing the graph on normal scale. Normal scale. So if we if we draw the curve in log log scale, the first portion is one straight line, second portion is one straight line, and third portion is completely completely flat line. This portion, this first portion is the elastic limit, second portion is plastic limit, that is consolidation settlement, and just crossing that the plastic limit, then it is failure level. From that point, either you cannot raise any further pressure even under any application of pressure it will be going below. The pressure will be going below. That means the soil has already settled. We should consider only 
up to the failure point, settlement up to the failure point. And elastic portion, you can, you, it is not necessary to consider the, this first portion in your settlement analysis, settlement, actual settlement analysis, the consolidation portion, the middle portion settlement, that you can consider that only. Because elastic, the, since it is elastic state, it will maintain its own balance. So some, some scientists and experts always saying that uh, soil is weightless. Soil is weightless. The, the self weight is balanced by the elastic properties of the soil. So you see, in this equation, in this equation you see, immediate settlement or elastic settlement equal to PBI, B is the weight of the foundation, P is the pressure in pressure, 1 minus mu square by E elastic modulus or PBI 0.75 by E. This portion it is arithmetical derivative because since mu equal to mu equal to Poisson ratio mu equal to 0.5 since it is almost in the range of 0.45 to 0.545 for hard clay and 0.55 for soft clay. So, in between, it is average is 0.5, so it is also, most of the books also suggested as 0.5, and code also suggested. But, so, second, second page, it is just derivatives, arithmetic derivatives, not mathematical derivatives, it is just arithmetic derivatives. In these equations, also, the foundational settlement is proportional to pressure intensity P and foundation with P. So, there is, it is directly proportional. There is no indirect proportion, it is directly proportional to P and B. There are many other methods of calculation of foundation settlement and these are basically from standard penetration test and value, which is very simple. It is too simple. The procedures are furnished in IS8009 part 1. However, in my opinion, estimation of settlement from estimation of settlement from Anbelu, from the graph, from the figure furnished in A009 is best suited for granular soil only, not for cohesive soil. And in calculation during the uh, settlement from the Anbelu curve, it is precisely the Anbelu survey corrected that it, at a close spacing, you are conducting a SPT at 1.5 meter or 3 meter interval. But in case of calculating, you have to consider very carefully at one meter what will be an value, at two meter what will be an value, at 1.5 meter what will, what will be an value, at least 0 0.50 me, 0 0.5 half meter, that is half meter interval, you have to calculate out some values, either using plotting some curve 
heart from depending upon some soil formation with other information, it shall be very, very, very accurate. It should not be like that. Here it is stand at this depth it will be 15, so we shall consider 15. No, okay. up to 1.5 times proper interval, very frequent interval, say about half meter inter interval, values should be adopted accordingly. It should be taken mean, mean means not ordinary average, it is weighted mean. And then only to calculate the settlement or sandy soil. Another, you can calculate the you can calculate the settlement from plate load test also. Although it is very short time loading, reliable information may be made on actual foundation site. But in my opinion, the equation furnished in A009 part 1, however, needs some modification. It is just adding uh, plate size relating to some uh, constant 30 centimeter or 0.3 meter and plus B like. The equation, one equation is there. I, if I not mistaken, this equation is, yeah, this is the equation, you see. The plate settlement divided by, in above it is B multiplied by B uh, plate size plus 0.3 divided by BP multiplied by B plus 0.3 whole square, then SP multiplied by SP. That is for foundation settlement. This equation was recommended by IS A009. But what I find after calculation, series of analysis from 5 ton to, uh, uh, no, uh, from uh, for various foundation sizes from 1 meter to uh, 10 meter like that, I have calculated many foundation sizes considering 1 meter settlement as a plate derivative, as a plate settlement. And I find the foundation settlement B divided by plate size, it is foundation size B divided by plate size to the power 0.75 and plate settlement. This, this equation gives very close to theoretical estimate that I had already uploaded, which is perhaps surely you noticed that discussion. There are a lot of correction and modification factors are there. One is calculated settlement name modification for depth factor as per how card. Fox curve, there is, it is depth, depth factor, depth factor when B is equal to, uh, equal to DF, then depth factor will be 1.33. It is mentioned in IS6403 in notation. You, Mark is shall be noticed in, in notation the factor at maximum 1.33. So 1 divided by the factor is the value of that 
Huxka. Huxka. And we, in case of rectangular foundation, we should take uh, correct defector or you can go for equivalent B considering square, converting L by B into a square, then take B from that equivalent area. Drainage factor, no, pore pressure correction, pore pressure because of some soil is very weak, there are some pore pressure, con pore pressure ratio will be, pore pressure correction factor will be much higher, very soft soil, then it will be the C 1.2 and very hard, hard soil that is pre-consolidated, over-consolidated soil, then it will be 0.2 to 0.5 like that. There are some, uh, lot of conditions are there. Accordingly, the pore pressure correction is necessary. Another is drainage correction. In case of presence of any pervious sandy stratum at top or bottom of the significant depth, normally it should be taken as 0.5. That means when it will be the sandy soil, so both, both say upper portion is in upper, just below the foundation there is a sand pocket is there. Slightly, say, say 100 mm thick sand pocket is there, and the bottom of the 1.5 b thickness, there is a sand strata is there. Then your 1.5 b that should be, it should be reduced to 50 percent. Instead of, instead of reducing directly on this, we are reducing later on using this drainage coefficient. In many textbooks, it was explained very properly. And in case of sandy soil, it is necessary to consider as a consider for drainage correction. Rigidity factor, rigidity factor, say large size foundation, say it is 10 meter size individual foundation, then it will behave like Raft foundation. So in such cases, it should be 0.8. Rigidity factor is 0.8. In uh, say uh, most of the most of the, most of the places, I notice even five meter or six meter more foundation, individual foundation, they are considering rigidity factor, since that large foundation shall behave like an individual raft. Very important aspect of the foundation supplement analysis is basically initial void ratio at no loading condition and final void ratio at under very high loading condition, normally 8 kg centimeter square. 8 kg centimeter square means it is 80 ton. So 80 ton per meter square means 800 can per meter square. This much of loading in no structure we require to apply. In per square meter, 800 km, in no way it is loaded. Where only, only type of soil are loaded up to 80 ton meter square. No type of soil, we are know where it is loading. And during actual stack cell loading, Gradual loading, the void ratio is also gradually decreasing. 
the compression index CC or MB both are really have dependable relationship with void index. So when we are loading, load is increasing, void is decreasing. During last for more than five decades in this profession I have associating with many projects, bridges, building tall structures like microwave tower, heavily moving transmission towers, where nowhere I noticed any foundation settlement failure of any kind. Unfortunately, I had been successfully completed, rehabilitated, adopted, which were adopted different methods to resist further settlement. Few major structures, rehabilitated few measures which is accessibly settled, I have rehabilitated those structures. In no case, foundation settlement our estimated foundation settlement shall be exceeded more than 30 percent of the calculated settlement. Because you see, uh, say, initially our void index was 0 0.55. 0.55. During that time, our CC is 0 0.087, 0 0.087. After initial loading, the void will be decreasing, then it will be, uh, void will be decreasing to 0 0.50. What happened then? Our, uh, this CC value will be decreasing 0 0.087 to 0 0.08. Further, next loading, say after five-story five building, we consider it is 0.5. When it will be go for 10-story, then it will be less than 0.5, why it will be go for 0.45. Then CC will be automatically come down 0.8. 0 0.08 to 0 0.07 accordingly low, low on the increasing loading pattern give us relief in voids. Voids means in settlement. If we calculate the settlement CC or MV on the basis of void decreasing condition of the void, then you will get quite evidence then our calculated estimated settlement shall be less, not more than 30 percent of the actual settlement shall not more than the 30 percent of the, our estimated settlement. And another import and normally the supplement maximum of five to ten years it shall be completed. That is Pisa Tower in Kutub Mina there is also a little amount of uh, little amount of tilt depends on settlement in Kutub Mina also there. But at present our present structure and not constructed for thousand years, for thousand years of life. We are constructing, considering hundred years of life. Beyond, within lifetime, hundred percent loading shall nowhere be there. No one go for hundred percent loading during 
entire lifetime of Anishta. There are a lot of sacrifices there. However, now this is simple settlement analysis. I have already uh, already presented in the earlier my discussions. Here I am loading from five ton square meter, that is it is five ton means five ton square meter load, load and I have calculated the settlement settlement is 2.6 centimeter no, 2.6 millimeter and 10 ton loading it is 4.83 15 ton loading 6 6.79 20 ton loading it is 8.529 25 ton up to 40 ton at 5 ton interval up to 40 ton I have estimated the foundation settlement and after drawing the curve, after drawing the curve, this equation is given, equation, I got this equation. This is loading, x scale is loading, y scale is settlement. Is settlement equal to, settlement equal to, this is, minus 0 0.0038 0 load square plus 4.916 load plus 0 0.1292. This is very approximate. This is very approximate. It is, this equation is computer generated equation. It is very approximate. And Anyway, for approximate information also, if you go for this approximate information, in such cases also, you need at least one calculation. One calculation, this, this equation shall not valid, never be valid for different type of soil. For this type of soil, this once you calculate the one settlement, say for your design as BC, one calculate one, somewhere some other sizes of foundation is there. The, in, in the same structure, there are some other sizes of foundation where load is slightly may vary or this same. Uh, outer uh, foundations where load not be not supposed to be increased by adjusting loading structures. In such cases load of the structure are little less. In such cases after estimation of one foundation settlement of a certain pressure intensity then only you can apply this equation. You can only apply this equation only, otherwise not. I hope it will give some rough information, rough information, and I do not support you to use this equation for your own structures. That means own structures means which you design by yourself or supervised supervision is under you. In such cases, you should not use this equation. It is always better to go for calculation by yourself.
it is always better to go for calculation by yourself only. Please have a nice day. Thanks for a lot of time giving me and my best wishes and I pray God for all well of all of you and be contented. Charve Sukhina Bhavantu Sarve Santu Nirama. Please have a sweet day. I hope you can understand about the settlement behavior. Settlement is shall not be panic, it is within the command of human. We can control the settlement. Share we cannot. Please have a sweet day.